are you ready for part two is this part two or is this one B we'll see we'll see we'll see where it goes amen would you give our founding pastor a big oh, hand pastor night. Jack hallelujah uh, I want to finish uh, several people came up to me about those cutting remarks that we've all had to put up, put up with in our life. Amen? And uh, the Bible says we have to take those thoughts captive and not let them define us. And my situation where I was told that, uh, in playing golf that I would not make the team and I would not be able to do certain things. And I remembered that. But I didn't believe it because uh, in high school, I went to state in one state. I went to the Air Force, played on the Air Force golf team. So I didn't, let it, I didn't let it stop me. But I still remember it. I was still able to tell you that story about it. So I, I know how cutting remarks cut you to the bone. And you know, and especially by a loved one, we really have to take, the, the Bible says, think on these things, those things that are pure and wholesome and righteous. Amen? Amen. Everybody brought your Bible? Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, I'm going to use two scriptures to set this up. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And it's profitable because it tells me what's right. It tells me what's not right. It tells me how to get right. And then it tells me how to stay right. Wow, all scripture. Genesis to the maps. Did y'all catch that? Genesis to the maps, which is past Revelation. So all Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, it's given inspired breath of God for us, for, for, for believers. Amen? And then 2 Timothy 1, Paul telling Timothy, prophesying to Timothy, Timothy, in the last days, how many would say, you're, you're thinking we're in the last days? Yeah. In the last days, perilous, perilous times are going to occur. Now, when he says that, he starts off by saying man. Man will become lovers of themselves, boastful and proud. Mary Jean was sharing with me, the news is talking about they discovered there might be water on Mars. On the moon, excuse me. Water on the moon, which means that it might be able to take care of human life. And so they're already talking about civilization on the moon. The Tower of Babel is in effect right now. Man said, let us build something so tall without the help of God that we will be exalted around the earth. And that's, that's what man is doing. And I'm telling you, if it ever happens, God will not be, well, God will be there, but he won't be recognized on the moon. Because man is lover of himself, boastful and prideful. Amen? In, uh, I, I, I I mentioned those two scriptures. Uh, in reading through the Bible, and I know most of us have, I was amazed at reading about probably 13 or 14 events in the life of Jesus where something happened, a miracle, a miracle of miracles happened, and either the person, whatever the situation was, or the people and uh, but then Jesus made this statement after he healed certain what, what, a leper. And the, if you've ever seen leprosy, it's hideous. Eye sockets are out, skin is off the bones, and everything. It's a it's a terrible disease. But this man was healed a leprosy, and the Bible says immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately. immediately he was healed. But the next thing out of Jesus' mouth was, don't you go tell a soul. And I'm thinking, Lord, 
don't go tell anyone? And so I started looking up all the different situations about the different times. There's something behind, oh, there he is. Shh. Isn't that amazing? That could be the leper right there. Jesus had to have a reason and a purpose for saying those things. Let me, let me, let me stop right there. Let me ask a question. How many of you would raise your hand and say to me you were saved because of a miracle? You were saved because a miracle either happened to you or you saw or you were present for a miracle. Raise, come on, let me see how many hands. Okay, look at that. Okay, let me ask you this question. Did that miracle save you? Now, it probably, now, some of you said no, some of you, but you, you turned to the Lord. You knew that it was God that did that miracle. God uses miracles to get us to repent and, and to receive Jesus. I understand that. But if, if we're only saved by a miracle, we can be lost by a miracle because, as Pastor Jack is going to be talking about end times, the Antichrist, they're going to be doing miracles. And if we're, if we're totally influenced because of a miracle, we can be lost. Amen. So I just want to, uh, Mark 7, 31 talks, these are two stories. A man that was deaf and dumb, he could not speak or hear. I like this. I called it spit, spat, and spittle. <laughs> I did a sermon one time and I said spit, spat, and, and so he spit on the ground. He made mud. He stuck his finger in the guy's ear and he started hearing and then he took the mud and put it on the man's mouth and he started speaking. Wow, what a miracle. But then what did he say? Jesus commanded him. He didn't just ask him or tell him. He said, I command you, don't tell anyone. Our pastor says that we're not a come ye church. We're a go ye church. We're to go and to expound the things of God. So Jesus, he had to have a reason. I'm going I'm to give you the reason. Amen. Mark 1, 34, Jesus is with the disciples and Peter's wife is sick in bed with a, a fever, it says. And Jesus went in and laid his hands on her and he healed her. And a lot of people heard about it. And so they brought, they brought the sick and many that were demon possessed and cast out devils. And then he said, don't go tell anybody about what happened. I need to know why. I need to know why. Because he tells the disciples a lot of times when they, when they went out, teach the gospel. Go out and, and spread the good news. Go tell people what I'm doing. Why didn't he do it every time? Luke 5, 10, the man with leprosy. One leper came up. You know, there were 10 lepers at one time and uh, they hollered have mercy on us and, and Jesus said go, sh go show yourself to the priest and take the sacrifice that Moses required and it says all ten of them were healed as they went. Can you imagine? Now they were by themselves because uh, you couldn't be around a leper but th there was another leper that came to Jesus and, and he did the same thing. He healed him and he said he immediately he was made whole. But he commanded him not to tell anyone. Matthew 9, there were two blind men. Two blind men. Couldn't see a thing. Jesus healed them. They went from not being blind to where they could see. Beautiful stories of the power and the love and the compassion of God. But then he said, don't you tell anyone. I said, okay, Lord, you got to show me why. And he took me to Mark 4, 43. Jesus said this, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also for this reason I am sent. 
The preaching of the Word of God is more powerful than a miracle. Benny Hinn, Catherine Kuhlman, when they would have their their meetings, and, and I assume they still today, people don't go to hear the Word of God. The majority. What do they go for? They go to see a miracle. Now, praise God if they see a miracle and it causes them to repent and fall on their knees and accept Jesus, hallelujah. But Jesus said, I would rather go and preach the good news than to have a miracle. Because a miracle is going to define a person. You understand what I'm saying? That, that miracle will follow people their entire life. But it's the word that's going to change people's lives. Thy word, Lord, have I hid in my heart. He sent his word and healed them. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The power that's in the scriptures. I start off every day, and, and I was real lax for a while. I start off every morning as I pick up my daily, my daily Bible, and I, I say, Lord, thank you for this love letter to me. Amen. And I, I look at it as if God scripted that for me this morning. And I'm, and I'm saying, Lord, reveal to me your newsletter. Tell me what's happening today in my life and me. Amen. And it kind of helps me to understand when I, now, I happen to be in Leviticus. <laughs> and, you know, almost every page starts off, and God said to Moses. Isn't that right, Jack? Oh, and the regulations and the food you don't touch, you don't eat, and put this bell here and put that ding dong over there and, and everything. And I'm saying, okay, Lord, our God is a precise God. He's not haphazard. He hung every star in the heavens. Does everybody know it's leap year? You knew that? Well, y'all are smart. Well, I didn't marry Jean on the way to church. I said, what does leap year mean? Why do, why do we have leap year? Uh, well, it's an extra day, but why? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it has to do with the world spinning for 365 days to make a circle, Right? You people are smarter than that. <laughs> but it's but but it's three hundred sixty-five point two five. See there. So every four. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. See, you you guys are learning a bunch this morning. <laughs> Why do we have leap? And we're this is leap year. So February will have an extra day. So what if you're born February the twenty-ninth? When do you celebrate your birthday next year? But what, when am I going to celebrate next year? There ain't no 29. I think what the Lord is just wanting to let us know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The power that's in our confession. Mm -hmm. The power that we live and die by what we say. And again, uh, I just asked the Lord, Lord, why? It was more important for him to go, because it says there were so many miracles that he, he, he well, in, in, Mark, uh, in Luke 5, there were so many people that came up to the lake of Gennesaret and he had to get in Peter's boat to, press, to get out in the water to what? Perform miracles? No. 
to preach the good news. Doing miracles was just, Jesus loved doing it. Mm -hmm. Feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, raising the dead. They're, they're beautiful. And, and I was there, if I were there, I think I'd have to turn to the Lord. But it's His Word. Thy Word have I hid in my heart Amen. that I might not sin against Thee. That's how powerful that Word is when we get it into our heart. Because, you know, thank God for healing. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for redemption. You know what those are, folks? Those are all words. Those are all words. And God's given us the power to quote them. I am redeemed. I am. Now wrap your brain around this. It's only words. I am the righteousness of God. Come on, Jack, give me a break. I know you growing up. I've had people when they found out I was a pastor, we go to a union, they say, you're a What? <laughs> Come on now. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, get a picture. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Everything that Jesus Christ accomplished performed and did because of his righteousness and I'm under that righteousness because of my confession. Hallelujah. Therefore, I am the righteousness of God Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. Now, now, some of you may grab that real quick. I, I had to work on it. Because, see, my confession leaned more towards what I'm thinking or saying about myself rather than what I have found out God says about me. You know, a lot of times we sing great songs and we think that we're saying them about God, but I truly believe God's saying those about us. Yeah, that's true. How, much, how much He loves us and how much He wants us to feel His presence. Christianity, it's not just fellowship. It's relationship. Yes. We know in a husband and a wife, we know that what consummates this, this union, of course, is the shedding of blood. It's the same, it's the same with, the, with being in relationship with God. Amen. Blood was shed that we might have communion with God, that we might be in fellowship with, with God, that we might have a rightful standing. Amen. I think that's why God spoke to us this morning. We're not here because of who we think we are. We're here because of what God, what He says I am. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I must preach the word. Our team is going to uh, Thailand, and uh, miracles will happen. They went to, everybody know Jack went to Peru? <laughs> how, many, how many saved? 26,000, Jack? 26,000 people saved. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if some of them were saved if a miracle was done, but 26,000 were saved because they heard the Word of God. What, what, do you, what would, did Jesus tell all the people? How much God loved them and how much God has made a place for them and how much God gave up to redeem us from sin, sickness, and disease. It, it says the good news. Now, miracles always happened, I believe, because people were looking for them. I, I want to see a miracle. I, you know, I, 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 I like to see miracles. Uh, God, God asked me one time in a service, we were praying for miracles. There's about 50 of us. We were praying for miracles. Oh, God, we want to see miracles. Hallelujah. 
And the Lord spoke to me and said, you want to see a miracle tonight? Well, okay. And he showed me a miracle. What we, how we had been praying for something, for someone. And he, he showed me that person getting saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and finally went into the ministry. I said, thank you, Lord. But I was already saved. So God, God desires to do miracles. Amen. But he had rather plant that word in our hearts. Because a miracle is a situation. The word is a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That, see there, that wasn't too long. 